to be saved tonight. Say amen. amen. A couple of you believe that tonight. Praise the Lord. I've enjoyed, I enjoy listening to my family sing, and uh, as long as it doesn't include me in the group, we'll be all right. And uh, I'm just so thankful. I pray, and uh, I would ask you to pray, as you think of our family pray, that my kids would always sing for the Lord, and serve the Lord, and uh, just because their parents do, uh, that doesn't mean by default that they always will, and I pray that they'll stay faithful to the Lord, and, uh, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm tickled to death. I always, I love hearing them sing, I do, and uh, they get their singing talent from me, because their mom still has hers, but uh, they got it all from me. But I'm so grateful to be here tonight again at Salome Baptist Church. And uh, just just so so thankful. Always enjoy coming back. I remember the days when we were meeting in living rooms. And uh, and anywhere, actually anywhere we could, we could meet, find a place to meet. Uh, we did, and 
I just remember those days and just to see how far the Lord has brought this church and this group of people. And I'm so grateful for what He's doing. It's a special place. It's a special place in, uh, in many different ways, special place in my heart. But uh, it's so obvious that the Lord's hand is on this church in, in so many different ways. And I pray that it will stay that way. And the Lord will continue to use uh, Shalom Baptist Church as a lighthouse uh, in this community. My goodness, what an opportunity we have. You know, there's a lot of people these days that are real pessimistic about uh, what's taking place in America, and, and surely it's not a good situation. And we look around, but if we're not careful, we get real discouraged. Uh, but listen, God's still on the throne, and uh, He still wants to use Miss. Uh, Miss Steele was talking about the young men who were here this morning, and and uh, I know throughout our ministry, just had to sing that so many times. You know, young people come to church, and uh, man, they've not had anything to eat, and whether they didn't just have time, or sometimes it's just they didn't have it to eat. And uh, I'm always reminded of Proverbs 4:14. It says, "Where there are no oxen, the crib is clean." And sometimes these youngins, they make a mess. And sometimes there's, uh, there's some aggravation along the way. But the uh, Bible says much increase, much increase uh, comes by the strength of the ox. And sometimes we put up with those things by the fruits that it will yield down the road. And uh, I'm just so thankful for, for a church that has a heart to reach the community, reach young people, reach older people for Jesus Christ. And I pray that that lighthouse will never grow dim, that it will stay on course. Second Samuel chapter 23 tonight. Second Samuel chapter number 23. Lord willing, we, we uh, head back to North Carolina in the morning. And so if you think about us throughout the day, pray for us. And uh, I was talking about all those crazy drivers on the road, and uh, that's that is true. <laughs> they are they are everywhere. And uh, I thought about a fellow who uh, went out for groceries one day, and his wife was watching the news, and she called him on the on his cell phone. She said, "Honey, be careful." She said, "I'm watching the news," and she said. Uh, there's, they're talking about this crazy guy on the road, and he's going all the wrong way. And I said, he's, he's going against traffic. He's on the wrong side of the road. And, and she said, he, he, they're saying he's a madman. Be careful. He said, honey, it's worse than that. Now everybody's going the wrong way out here. And so I wonder who that fellow was. But anyway, anyway, you pray for us if you think about it tomorrow. Second Samuel chapter 23 Let's look in verse number 8 tonight, 2 Samuel 23, verse number 8. Just want to preach a challenge tonight. I believe the Lord would be honored with. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. The Tachmanite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adino, the Esnite. Lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Aoite. Now, apparently, Eleazar's mother did not care much for him. Uh, somebody's named their son Dodo, all right? And so, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if that was a problem growing up, but uh, I'm glad my mom didn't name me Dodo, all right? She might call me that a time or two, but didn't name me that. One of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines till his hand was weary. His hand clave unto the sword, and the Lord wrought a great victory that day. The people returned after him only to spoil. And after him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Herite. The Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils. The people fled from the Philistines. They stood in the midst of the ground and defended it. They slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. Tonight I want to preach a message for just a few minutes entitled, Battling for the Beans. Battling for the Beans. Father, would you help us tonight? I need your help. 
I pray that you would lift our hearts and courage us, strengthen our hand for the work, at the at, Lord, that's in front of us. And Lord, I pray that you would get glory and honor through our service. Thank you for how our hearts have been encouraged through testimony, through song tonight. I pray that you would take the scriptures tonight, and the Spirit of God would work in the depths of our soul. And Lord, that you would encourage us, strengthen and change us tonight for Jesus' sake. Well, thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We look at this passage of Scripture. The Bible's telling us specifically about three of David's mighty men. Now, there were more than three. There were several hundred of David's mighty men that followed him into battle in many different places. We studied the, uh, the campaigns and episodes of these men that followed David these were tremendous men that get fought and won great battles. But the Lord, in these few verses here, highlights three men especially. Now, these were some pretty bad dudes. <laughs> they, they weren't anybody you want to make mad at you, right? These guys were, they were the Israeli Navy SEALs. They were the Bethlehem Green Berets. I mean, they were, they were top notch. They were top of the line. The Bible tells us about a Dino who by himself one day killed 800 men just by himself. You think about those odds. Those are pretty high odds. Uh, those aren't starting into battle, look around, and 800 men have been killed at the end of the day. My t I tell you what, what a warrior. The Bible talks about Eleazar who fought all day long by himself. The Bible tells him that he fought the Philistines all day. And the Bible says when he got to the end of the day that his hand claved to his sword. Uh, that means that his hand had gotten in such a way from fighting and yield, uh, 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 wielding that sword all day long that at the end of the day he couldn't even let go of the sword. That he had, it had grasped that sword so tight that somebody had to help him uh, release his fingers from the handle of that sword. They had fought so hard all day. And, and you think about a warrior, somebody who didn't, didn't know the meaning of the word quit. And I tell you what, what a great man that, that God enabled to fight. I want to focus in, in the verse 11 and 12 on the third man for just a few minutes. This man named Shammah. This man, the Bible tells us about one campaign and one battle that he had on this one particular day. And some things that might help us and encourage us tonight as we look forward in the future of Shalom Baptist Church. I want you to see number one tonight that it was a time of great conflict. It was a time of great conflict. Which, look what the Bible says in the verse number 11. After him was Shammah the son of Aji the Herite, and the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils. The Bible tells us it was a time of great conflict. The Bible says that the Philistines, if you study your Bible and know the history in the Old Testament, you'll find that the Philistines were always coming against the Israelites. They were always coming against the people of God. They were always looking to do harm to God's people. And every time they turned around, it seemed like the Philistines were coming back against them. And this day was like many other days of the Philistines were marching against the people of God. The Bible says they were gathered together in the troop. As you study it, not real sure what that means exactly, but it can mean either a cavalry unit of upwards of 60 to 75 cavalry units, mounted horsemen, or it could just simply mean a multitude of soldiers, a multitude of the Philistines had gathered together and they were marching against the people of God. Listen, today we are still facing an enemy who marches against the people of God. We still have an enemy who is not backed up or slacked up at all. He is still attacking the children of God. He is still marching against the church of God. His tactics have not changed. He is still has a goal in mind, and that's to bring destruction to God's people. We have an enemy 
It would do us well as God's people never to forget that. To never underestimate our enemy who is still gathering together to march against his people. I want you to notice the Bible tells us when this enemy showed up against the people of God. The Bible says they were gathered together where was a piece of ground full of lentils. That means that it was harvest time. We study that. The best thing that we can uh, think about these lentils were possibly a ground of peas or a ground, a harvest of beans. And when the Bible says that it was full of lentils, it means that it was harvest time. They were getting ready to gather the harvest into the storehouses. They were getting ready to go into the fields and reap the fruit of their labor. They had labored in planting. They had labored to carry water to the fields. They had labored to keep the weeds out of the fields. And now the harvest was ready to be reaped. They were ready to gather in the fruits of their labor. And the Bible tells us that it was at that time, at the time of harvest, at the time of reaping the harvest, that the enemy showed up. These people were not preparing for battle, but they were preparing to garden. They were preparing to reap benefits and to rejoice because of the fruit of their labor. And it was in that time that the Philistines showed up when the people of God were occupied doing the work in the fields is when they ought to be in focus on the work of the fight. But they were getting ready to bring in the harvest. Isn't it just like the devil to show up in our lives at the time when we think we're ready to rejoice, when we're ready to give some testimonies of the goodness of God? It's at those times when somebody has gotten saved. It's at those times when the church is growing that the devil shows up ready to do battle. Hey, listen, it's in the times when we're ready to rejoice and sit back and just enjoy the benefits and the harvest that God gives. And in those moments, if we're not careful, we let down our guard and we forget about an enemy who is on its way. Because can I remind you tonight, church, that at the time that you don't think about it, when you least expect it, the enemy is marching. Oh, listen, our life many times is full of mountains and valleys, and we don't experience the mountain top long that we head into a valley. We head in those times, we experience the times of rejoicing, but we get ready for the times of fighting because the enemy is still on the way. Listen, it's in those times where we renew our dedication to serve the Lord on Sunday morning and on Sunday evening. The Lord speaks to our hearts. He gives us a tank of gas. He renews our spirit. He gives us joy in our hearts. And we leave the church house on Sunday night excited to do something for God. But on Monday morning, the devil shows up in our life. On Monday afternoon, the phone rings with some news we weren't expecting. On Tuesday morning, we get a phone call and all of a sudden, we're in a battle that we did not look forward to. We did not anticipate. But watch out because the enemy's on his way to cause the destruction. Listen, the devil doesn't mind the fact that there is a Baptist church on East Felton Street in North Tonawanda. That doesn't bother him in the least. But when Shalom Baptist Church decides to get on fire for God and decides to do something for the God of heaven and decides to reach into the community to bring lost people in so that they might be saved, snatch those headed for hell and set them on the way to heaven to reach out to those teenagers who have no hope, who's coming from a broken home. It's in the moment that we dedicate ourselves as a church to reach the unreachable, to give hope to the hopeless. Oh, it's at those moments that Satan will load his guns and come at this church. It's at the moment that we decide, hey, we don't want to be average. We don't want to shut the doors. We want to take another step for God. It's in that moment, mark it down, that Satan is on his way to do battle against the church of God. Oh, listen, it's when we get in our quiet time and all of a sudden our devotion and those altars are being rebuilt in our life that Satan will try to cause us harm. Satan showed up when the harvest. Oh, but listen, he shows up not to just talk. He shows up not just to have a conversation. 
Remember this, the enemy's goal is always destruction. 1 Peter 5 and verse 8, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Satan's goal has always and will always be the destruction of God's people, will always be the destruction of every man, woman, boy, or girl that is created in the image of God. He hates the God of heaven and he hates the human beings who are created in his image. His goal is complete and utter destruction. And we sometimes as Christians forget exactly what his goal is. So many times we underestimate our enemy. So many times we coddle and play games with our enemy when we should be doing battle with the enemy. The Bible says that the enemy showed up at harvest. But the sad part about this passage is when the enemy showed up, watch what happened to the people of God. The Bible says in the end of verse number 11, and the people fled from the Philistines. The people fled from the Philistines. Hey, when they got news that the Philistines were on their way, they said, no way, Jose, another day. They packed up as much as they could, as quick as they could, and they headed for another field. They headed for a safer pasture. They headed for a different county. They headed for a different piece of land they got away from where the Philistines were coming. They said, we're not built for battle. We'll see you later. They said, listen, uh, uh, as hard as we've worked in these fields, uh, we just don't feel like fighting the enemy today. And they ran, the Bible says, and fled from the Philistines. Oh, listen, uh, we do well to not forget that our enemy is coming. Uh, and our enemy seeks to do us harm. Uh, but as we look around, like our sister said just a little while ago, it's not long before we find uh, some people of God who are running the other way, who are tired of fighting the enemy. Maybe they fought some battles before, but today's just not the day to fight. Uh, Today is the day to take it easy. Today is the day to lay down the gardening tools and to lay down the weapons and find a different piece of ground to live in that may be just a little bit safer and a little bit more comfortable. Oh, but listen, in the day we live in, in 2021, there are churches all across America who are compromising and backing down and walking away from the Word of God and walking away from the commandments of the Word of God. God, and the standards of the Word of God and they're laying down their weapons and they're closing their Bibles and saying hey we just want to listen we don't want to make anybody upset and we don't want to battle and we don't want to fight anything we want everybody to be happy but the truth of the matter is the only one we need to be concerned about making happy is our commander our chief our cornerstone our general the Lord Supreme instead of everybody else who's compromising and capitulating and getting away and laying down the weapons. Oh, listen, God's looking for some people who's not waiting and not looking to run, but is looking to stand. Oh, listen, all across America today, there are churches that bear the name very similar to the name that's on the sign in this front yard. They're very similar names all across America and they're shutting their Bibles and they're running from the fight. They're laying down and they're closing their hands Hymnals, uh, and they're running for the fight uh, and they're telling the devil you can have it uh, we're not fighting uh, we don't want to reach the community we don't want to go into the highways and hedges uh, and compel them to come in because we're tired of fighting and listen can I tell you something saints of God uh, some of you have been walking with God longer than I've been alive uh, can I tell you it's not just the younger generation that is compromising the faith uh, there's some older men uh, sadly who are starting to walk away from the Bible they preached for years uh, and are walking away from the songs that they sang for years. Uh, they're walking away from the fight that they fought for years. Uh, and men that we would honor and respect, uh, they're just saying, not today. It's time to walk away. 
Oh, but listen, while it was a time of great conflict, uh, it was a time of great battle. Number two, it was also a time of great courage. Uh, hey, listen, uh, the enemy headed for this piece of ground uh, and the people ran away as fast as they could. Uh, and the Bible says that they fled from the Philistines. Uh, but in verse number 12, but he, that's this man Shema that we're talking about tonight, uh, but he, I love this, stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. Oh, oh listen, why everybody else was headed for the hills, uh, why everybody else was throwing down the rakes and the plows, uh, why everybody else was running it and cutting the mules loose and the oxen loose uh, and getting their families and getting out of Dodge as quick as they could. Uh, there was one man who looked around. Uh, he saw the enemy on the horizon. Uh, he saw the people disappearing into the sunset. Uh, and there was a man who had some determination Determination to take a stand for Jesus Christ. There was a man who decided to stand when everybody else was running. He determined that, that when everybody else was fleeing, he was going to fight. Listen, everybody else was running as fast as their legs could carry him. But there was one man who stood in the middle of this field of beans and said, I'm not going anywhere. By the grace of God, if it costs me my life, I'll stand here and I'll defend this ground. You understand understand in those days uh, that Shema was here and he was fighting in this ground. Uh, you understand that he didn't go to the sniper's nest. Uh, he didn't crawl into some Humvee with a 50 caliber mounted machine gun on top. Uh, he didn't start loading his AR-15. Uh, he, didn't, uh, he didn't rack a, a, a round into his sidearm. Uh, you realize that when he stood in this ground, uh, he was standing and he was fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, he didn't have drone support that was coming in for from headquarters. He didn't have a patchy helicopter circling him. He was standing all by himself and he looked around and he wasn't interested who was standing beside of him. He wasn't interested who was going to back him up. All he knew was there was a place to stand and there he would stand if it cost him everything. He was determined to fight. It was a time of great conflict but it was a time of great courage and bravery. Shema stood there in the midst of that ground and defended it. You ever thought about why he done that? He stood in the midst of the Israeli banking system and protected their gold and silver. Nope. I know what he did. He stood and protected the palace where the king was and defended King David with his life. Nope. Where did he stand? In the middle of a piece of ground full of beans. Time out. Shama, have you lost your mind? Have you bumped your head on something? Shama, you've been in the sun too long. What's the big deal with a piece of bean, with, with, a, with a field of beans? Listen, I, 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 you can tell by looking at me, I like food. We get together with our family, and the biggest question we have in the day is, what's the next meal, all right? What are we going to eat? We talk about what we're going to eat for supper at lunchtime while we're eating lunch. I mean, it's that important. And I, and I like food. There's not much food that I, I don't like. In fact, it would take me long to name the food I don't like, and I'll try anything at least once. I mean, I just like food, and, and I, I'm a meat and potatoes type of guy, you know? We had hamburgers and hot dogs for lunch, and I had my share, and then some of the kids' share that was left over, and my kids are trained that at the end of the meal, if there's something left on their plate, they bring it to Dad so he can... He can see if there's anything he wants. And I mean, that's just the way it is. And you would tell, you would think by looking at me that, that I don't eat many salads. But truth of the matter is, I actually like good salads from time to time. I do. I mean, a bowl of lettuce, as long as you put some chicken and uh, cheese and bacon and, you know, all that good stuff on it. And, you know, we want a balanced diet. You know, but I, I like a good salad too. I mean, but well, let's say tonight, right? Let's say tonight that, Church is over and it's time to eat. And let's suppose that we're all going to go to the buffet. How many of you like to go to the buffet and eat? All right? We're going to buffet our bodies. Amen? 
I stay away from those places. I feel like I got to eat my money's worth and then I get hurt doing something. Let's suppose we're going to go to the buffet in town. And let's suppose we all get there. And man, we've got our, our appetites built up. I mean, the preacher preached long tonight. And now I'm so hungry. My stomach's gnawing on my backbone. I'm ready to eat something. And so we get to the restaurant and somebody says, you know what? I'd like a good salad. I just got a hankering for a salad tonight. I, I think I'm going to eat a salad. And so you head to the salad portion of the buffet. Why you would waste your time and money on that, I don't know. But let's say that you did. And you head to the salad section. And let's suppose I get over there and I think, man, I want me a bowl of lettuce, slop it down in ranch dressing, and just have a time. And let's say when I get to the salad portion of the buffet, there are five guys there that are armed with AR-15s, hand grenades hanging all over themselves. They got face paint on them. They're wearing fatigues. And I look at them and say, good evening, fellas, and head to the salad, and they stand in my way and say, ah, 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 ah. I'm sorry. What's wrong? And they look at you and say, hey, bud, that salad is our salad. You can't have any. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn and go for the fried chicken. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Fine. If that's the way you feel about it, have your salad. Eat all you want. I'm not sacrificing my legs and my arms and my life for a bowl of lettuce. If you want it that bad, have it. In fact, if you want the whole restaurant, I'll go to Burger King and eat a Whopper. I'm not fighting you over it. Help yourself. And if it's that big a deal, I'll go eat a peanut butter sandwich. I'm not fighting over the buffet. And so we look at Shama, who is fighting all by himself for a field of beans. And we think, Shama, what's your problem? <laughs> you got some kind of hero complex or something? A death wish? What's, what's, the, what's going on here? You've got to understand the people of, in that time. You see, the people in those times were agricultural people. And that field of beans was not just a summer hobby of gardening that they had. This field of beans was not just, hey, we'll put in a raised bed this year and see what we can do. And if it don't, oh well, that wasn't what the deal was. You see, to this people, this harvest was everything. To this group of people, that field of beans was their livelihood. It was just not what they were going to eat, but it was what they would have traded to buy other things that they needed. Everything that they had was invested in this field of beans. And Shema realized that if these beans were lost to the enemy, there would be nothing left. He realized that if these beans were destroyed by the Philistines, there would be some families who wouldn't be able to feed their children. There would be some mamas and some daddies who would go hungry. There would be some children who possibly even starved to death because they had nothing left. You know why Shammah stood in the midst of the field of lentils all by himself? It's because on that day, Shammah realized that there were some things that were surrounding him that were worth fighting for. There were some things that the people of God, his family, his countrymen were depending on for their very survival. And Shema looked around and he said, you know what? There's some things that if I don't fight for them, will be lost and never regained. And so Shema found his place right in the middle of that field of beans. And he said it may just be a field of beans to those who read 1 Samuel 23, but to me and my people, it's everything that we have. 
It's all we have. And if it is lost, there's nothing left to fight for. There's nothing left to live for. And so come what may, if it costs me my life, there's some things that I'm going to fight for. There's things I'm going to defend. If it costs me my all, if I have to pay the ultimate sacrifice, I'll stand and defend this field of beans if I have to die over it. Listen to me today. There are still some things that our enemy is after. There are still some things that our enemy seeks to destroy that it would do us well as God's people to find somewhere in the middle of the field and say, listen, if I don't fight for it, what have our children got to live for? If I don't defend it, there's going to be some young people coming along that's not going to be able to enjoy what I've had to enjoy. There's going to be some young people that's not going to know the power of God if we don't fight to keep it from the enemy. Satan is seeking to destroy everybody he wants to. These young people sitting in the front of this building and in that nursery say when love nothing more than ruin and wreck their lives. But it's going to take some people of God that realize listen, it may just be just something petty to the rest of the world. But to me it's my family. To me it's my church. To me it's my Bible. To me it's the stand that I've stood on for years. And I'm not going to back down. If I die going to the grave fighting for the cause of Jesus Christ uh, then I'll die with my boots on uh, I'll die with a Bible in my hand and I'll die defending what God has given to us because that's all that we have left uh, hey listen while the rest of the world shuts their Bibles uh, and quits preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, there needs to be some shamus who says the gospel is still worth preaching and still worth defending and still worth fighting fighting for. Well, there's some people that is going through their hymn books and tearing out every song that has to do with the blood of Jesus Christ. God needs some shamas who will stand and say without the shedding of blood is no remission. And if the blood of Jesus Christ is taken away from my children and they don't know anything about it, they lose and they have nothing to live for. And Shama looked on that day and he said, listen, there are some things worth fighting for. There are some things worth defending and listen today I want to stand on the word of God I want to stand in my church I want to stand for the future of my children I've got four young people that need to see a mom and a daddy who doesn't back down from the things that God has given us they're not backing up they're not slacking up they're not giving up to the world they're not giving in to compromise they're not running away they're going to stand in the field and fight until God takes us to glory one day. There are some things we're fighting for. There are some things that if we don't defend, the enemy will destroy them. I have no control of what the liberal theologians say. I have no control what the compromisers and the new evangelicals say. I have no control what the bloggers put on Facebook. I have no control what the preacher half a mile uptown does. But I do have a choice to make on where I plant my feet as a husband, as a dad, as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have a choice to make. And I can join everybody else going by the side or I can plant my feet in the field of beans and say by the grace of God, with His help, with His strength, and with His courage, everybody else can flee if they want to. But bless the Lord in His precious name, I'll stand right here till God moves me somewhere else. Because there's some things we're fighting for. It was a time of great conflict and time of great courage. But lastly tonight, it was a time of great conquest. It was a time of great victory. Watch what happens. The Bible said He stood in the midst of the ground, defended it, and slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought... A great victory. I love this. <laughs> I love the fact that Shema had the courage to stand. I love the fact that he wasn't willing to run with the rest of the people. But you know what I really like? 
the fact that he won. <laughs> the fact that the victory belonged to the Lord. The Bible says that he slew the Philistines. Listen today. We don't need any more baby. We don't need any more Christians backing up. We need some folks standing. Can I tell you something? While Shama to everybody else looked like he was all by himself. Even though all his neighbors and friends had hit the highway. Although everybody else had packed a bag and headed for safety. And it looked that Shama, it looked like he was standing all by himself. The truth of the matter was, he wasn't standing alone. He wasn't fighting all by himself. Because on that day, as he drew his sword with determination in his heart, with a bravery in his soul that we stand in amazement of, there was a God who stood with him. There was a God who put air in his lungs. There was a God that kept his heart beating. There was a God that gave him strength in his muscles. And every time he swung that sword, the God of heaven was right there showing him where to swing it, showing him when to duck, showing him when to lift his shield, showing him when to throw his dagger, showing him when to step to the side, when to take a step forward, when to take a step back. And the whole day that he fought, the God of heaven was fighting at his side. The Bible says on that day he slew the Philistines and the Lord wrought a great victory. The Bible says on that day God won the battle. Shema fought and the God of heaven won. I'm glad today as we plant our feet and we stand what doesn't seem to be popular and we open our Bibles and still preach heaven sweet and hell hot. We still preach God great and the devil wicked. We still preach that this is the word of God, as we stand where we ought to stand, I'm glad today that we don't have to stand alone. It may seem like every other church around us has shut the doors and taken the Bible out of their pews. And it may be the only church in all of New York who holds the standard of Jesus Christ. But can I tell you, when you take a stand for God, you don't stand alone. The God of heaven will fight for you and fight with you and give you strength in your bones. Hey, listen, and the same God that helped Daniel in the lion's den and shut the lion's mouth and so that he could use those lions as a big old pillar that night. The same God who delivered Daniel out of the lion's den when he stood for God is the same God that stands for you and for me when we set up our mind to do right. The same God that walked with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in that fiery furnace and a wicked heathen king looked in and said, there's three men that we threw in but there's a fourth like unto the Son of God. And he said, hey, send them on out of there. Oh, listen, on that day, the God who walked in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and brought them victory is the same God that stands with us as parents and as grandparents when we take a stand for Jesus Christ. Oh, hey, listen, the same God who went down into that jail cell where Paul and Silas were and he started shaking that jail when they sang praises to his name that night after they had been beaten after they had been persecuted they got down there and started singing the same God who reached down and shook that jail and broke the chains and opened the doors for Paul and Silas is the same God that will keep opening doors as we seek to reach a community as we seek to tell the gospel to those who are lost oh listen in a group of world today when there's a bunch of preachers that will stand up and say well you just got to understand people just don't get saved the way they used to is the time that we can stand and say old oh, people get saved the same way they always have it's through the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ that has the power to save it's from the preaching of the foolishness of preaching to save them that are lost and why it may seem that we're standing alone and it may get lonesome as we take a stand for God I'm here to tell you based on the word of God he said I'll never leave you nor forsake you and we may stand alone humanly speaking but we never stand alone heavenly speaking because the God of heaven is there with us to strengthen us along the journey. The Bible says on that day the Lord wrought a 
a great victory. I can take courage in the fact that it's still possible to raise children on the Word of God. It's still possible to raise grandchildren, grandparents, on the Word of God. It's still possible, Miss Dot, to teach a group of Sunday school kids the Bible. Watch them grow up and serve God. It's still possible, church, to do what's right. It may not seem like it's popular, but it is always blessed. It may not seem like it is the fun thing, but our God is always faithful. And He will always stand with those who stand for Him. I'm glad the Word of God tells us He'll never leave us nor forsake us. I'm glad that the Word of God gives us strength. The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Chronicles that the, that the battle is not ours, but it is the Lord's. There's times I don't know where the enemy's coming. I'm surrounded. But I can look to the one who fights alongside. Say, God, this fight's bigger than me, but it ain't bigger than me and you. It may be too great for me, but it's not too great for my captain. It's not too great for the God of heaven. And I believe God is looking for some children of God. I believe God is looking for some churches, some members of a church who will stand up and say, by the grace of God, we'll stand in this field and we'll defend it until the day God takes us home or He raptures us out of here, I'm not backing up. Am I a soldier of the cross? A follower of the Lamb? And shall I fear to own His cause or blush to speak His name? Must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease while others fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas? Are there no foes for me to fight? Must I not stem the flood? Is this vile world a friend of grace? To help me on to God, I love the last verse of that song. It says, sure I must fight if I would reign. Increase my courage, Lord. I'll bear the toil, endure the pain, supported by Thy Word. Our Bibles are closed tonight. Ask the pianist to come.